Here's a little bit about me. I'm Sarah Cannon. I am from Birmingham, Alabama. But originally, I grew up in Westford, Massachusetts. Is anybody from Westford? Are you from Westford? Oh, Westford. No? You know where it is. Yay, okay. <laughs> it's right over by Lowell. <laughs> so um, no one's really ever heard of it. But this is sort of... I'm really excited to be here because it's sort of a coming home for me because I grew up around here and I've been in Alabama for 10 years now, so I'm excited to be in Boston. Yay. <laughs> you don't have to clap for that. <laughs> um, okay, so you can see my slides after the presentation at slideshare.net slash Sarah Cannon. And I'm sure I'll be putting it into the WordCamp Boston group as well. So if you miss some URLs, don't stress out about trying to write them down because you can see it all later. And that's my blog is sarah-cannon.com. And a little bit about me, just very briefly, is um, I work at an agency down in Alabama and I work a lot with WordPress. And I also work with the core UI team. I'm a core contributor to the core software. So. It's been a lot of fun. I love WordPress very much. Um, so basically, why are we here to talk about theming and mobile? As designers, we all tell stories, and it's really all about our content and storytelling. Throughout time, there's been many different ways we've conveyed stories, many different forms of communication. And with all the many devices out there, as history is progressing, we can get just caught in this abyss of lots of different devices, like huge monitors, little laptops, iPads, even TVs, Androids, iPhones, even fridges. Refrigerator has internet. You can even have internet in your car now. There's just so many different ways we can communicate our content and our story. And really what we want to kind of become, and the whole purpose of this talk, is that we want to become basically device agnostic. So we have this big black abyss of devices, and our content can kind of get convoluted if we don't display it correctly, and we just really want to focus on our content so we can obtain clarity. So it comes forward. And how do we do that? How do we deal with this problem of being clear and communicating our message without having the device slow us down. Well, there are a couple different methods that we can do. We can do a separate mobile site. We can use a plugin or theme. We can use responsive web design techniques, or we can just do nothing. And doing nothing is, you know, has its use cases. Sometimes you just don't even have to worry about it. Maybe you don't really need your site to adapt to mobile. But we really don't want to do number one. That's, uh, it's not a, like, it has been a good way to do things, but typically it kind of, you know, gets tricky. You might have to have maintain two different sites. You might have links that when you look at it on your desktop, all of a sudden it's a mobile site that you go to and you're like, I didn't want to go to a mobile site. So um, basically we want to focus on those two center methods, which were um, plugins and responsive web design. So let's talk about mobile WordPress plugins and themes very briefly. There are different ones that you can get and download and install for your WordPress site that basically is out of the box, you know, makes your site adapt for mobile. Here's one is Mobify. Basically it just takes it and makes it mobile. And there's also WP Touch Pro or WP Touch. And um, it takes your site and makes it mobile. And also OnSwipe, which is also on .com these days. Does anybody have OnSwipe on there? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Um, basically, if you go to um, the WordPress, your WordPress.com site, or you can actually get it and download it and install it for your dog, .org account, is it basically, this is what it looks like on the iPad. You basically swipe and it has this interface that takes all your posts and puts them in this swipeable, touchy interface. And you um, can interact with it in a very different way than you would um, on, the, on the computer because it's, 
you know, uses the swipe functions. So it's actually in the plugin directory. Um, you can download it and install it. So are those other two I just mentioned. But really, what I really want to focus on today is responsive web design, which is having to do with crafting your theme. Hicks Design is um, a great site, is a great example of responsive web design, and I'm just going to go into it real quick and show you what I'm talking about when I say responsive. Here it is in Chrome. And basically, depending on your browser width and size, it just changes and adapts to what, see how that changed right there? It's like this wide, but then when it gets skinnier, it adapts and changes. And then eventually, if you're on a, an iPad, the whole menu even moves up below, and you have like a really seamless experience with the way your images are lining up. And it's different, but it's not bad that it's different. It's really good because it helps your content become more clear so that you don't have to scroll and move around and, or like on your iPhone you don't have to zoom in and move around. It'll just adapt and line everything up just correctly for you. Let's go back. So basically this is what it would look like on a huge, huge monitor. You even have three columns on this side about our clients and work, you just keep going and it's nice. And then the iPad, it lines up on the side there. And then with the phone, you have it where the menu's just right on the top instead of straight down to optimize space. A great example, wonderful example of responsive web design is the 2011 theme. Does anybody use it? Yay. It's a wonderful out of the box theme for, um, that comes with WordPress now. Let's look at it. So here it is all gorgeous and lovely. And then when it gets smaller, the images shrink and adapt. And the text, the title gets smaller. The menu stacks. And the sidebar gets pushed below to where you have all your information that you need, like your meta and archives, but it's now at the bottom so that when you're on your phone, you can just do your phone scrolling and not have to worry about not being able to really have your content not be very legible. Actually, if you, if you go to 2011demo.wordpress.com and look at it on, your, on an iPhone or Android, it actually is a very beautiful way to read text. It's really very optimized. Like you, you aren't straining at all. It's just very, very crisp. So if you want your site to be responsive right now, you can just make it 2011. Okay. Here's another good example is Eight Faces. They they really um, even change up where their images are and everything when it um, when you have different dev devices. And this site is really great as well. And the uh, squares are really awesome. That grid is great because they just stack on top of each other. And so it's, it's inherently built to where you can just scroll down straight through all the different sections. So. How do we become responsive? What are, what are the ways that we can maybe take our current site and our current theme and make it adapt and change the devices so that our content really shines through? Well, we need adaptive grid systems. And we need m media queries. And those are kind of the two big, big things that we need, as well as um, flexible images. So. In terms of grid systems, there have been many grid systems that people have used, like 960 and Blueprint. And people have used these for a while. And 960 is based off of 960 pixel width. And this is great, but we need, instead of pixels, we need to be percentages. We need our content and our grid to be flexible so that we don't end up being 
confused and static and not adaptive. So we need it to be flexible. And there's a great article on fluid grids, that URL down at the bottom, a list of part articles, fluid grids. And there are frameworks just like the frameworks I just talked about, except that they are actually um, fluid. This is um, cssgrid.net. You can base a site off of that, and it will be fluid as well. Um, and then there's less framework. It's a framework that um, is a cross-device grid system based on media queries. So basically, it adapts itself to different devices on its own. So you can work with your theme based on some of those methods. Or you can adapt your own theme. Basically, what you need is your grid system to be based on percentages. So how do we do that? It's target divided by context equals result. So basically, you have a 940 wide um, grid. And you may, maybe you have like a 720 and a 220 sidebar. Well, basically, you need them all add, to add up to 100%. Your 940 is your 100%. So you know, 940 divided by 720 and 940 divided by 220, and you get your long decimal percentages, and they all add up. And you say, oh, those decimals are so long. But really, browsers want your long decimals. They want all, every single one of them, because they'll get really confused if you round. So make sure you include every last little decimal point. And basically, that becomes fluid. It becomes flexible. Um, here's an example of uh, 2010 that's responsive. Responsive2010.com. You take the 2010 grid, and then you can take the pixel widths and do what we just talked about and change it to all those long percentages, even with the margins, and it'll become responsive. So basically, whatever size your window or browser is, it'll, it'll flex to. And you can also, what's really important is to put constraints on it. You don't want it to be huge and go on forever. You, know, you want it to have a max width, a max width at a certain point. So then it, it, it'll adapt to the different devices. So we have our fluid grid. Now what we need is we need it for it to know what device it's on. How do we know what our screen resolution is? How can we really target different devices? We do this with media queries. Media queries is kind of like conditional comments. Basically, you know, conditional comments, you say, oh, it's, if this is Internet Explorer, load in this style sheet. Well, with media queries, basically it's all about the at media, and we can detect different devices. Um, I don't know. This is, uh, for small screens, you can say at media only screen and max width 1023. And that way, you can put CSS in that that really just only caters to that device, max width 1023. So say you built your main grid and your main CSS for a large monitor. Then you can put this in, and it'll whatever you put in there, you can change it and shrink it down a little bit. And here's for iPad. Media only screen and min device width 481 and max device width 1024 and orientation landscape. Or you can do portrait orientation as well. So you can even adapt on the fly when you turn your iPad, your CSS will just know to adapt your, um, your grid. And media handheld for iPhone or other ones. And then um, all, of the, all other mobiles, media, handheld, and you just set your orientation and your, your max width. So really, you can have a lot of different iterations. And you do a lot of different testing. And you can just see, you know, tweak and finagle your CSS within these parameters to make sure that it comes out on all your different devices just the way you want it. You know, you might want to up your font size just slightly for the iPhone. You might want to take it down for the iPad, you know, whatever you 
feel like is the best readability, your best content. But here's something very important. Media queries need to have a way to fall back. So CSS3-MediaQueries.js is um, a great fallback for older browsers. It implements basically your media queries with JavaScript. Very important. So here's some resource on media queries, and um, I'm going to leave this up very briefly because we're going to keep going. But it'll be in my slide share. Um, so some must-see articles and resources on responsive web design. This is a book by Ethan Marcotte, and it's a great book. Um, it's an list apart book, and it was just released this spring, and it's all about responsive web design. And he goes into depth about you know, how different grid situations, different, um, you know, making sure your images and your videos all work with your max widths and heights and stuff, and your percentages and your fonts and M's, and it's extremely detailed, so if you're really interested in this subject, I would recommend it. I also recommend um, some of the articles online. He wrote this one, so if you aren't sure if you want to get the book, just go ahead and read this responsive web design article by him. It's great. Um, and then he's, he also did a fluid grid article. And then this is a Smashing Magazine article that talks about responsive web design and really kind of visually displays like really what we're trying to do here. Unstoppable Robot, Robot Ninja about fluid images. It's a great article to read. Really just dive into it, get as much information as possible, because every site's different, everybody has different needs, some people have videos, some people don't, you know, some people have huge needs, and some people are just want things to be very simple. Um, this is a really recent article from Smashing Magazine that has responsive de design tech tools and techniques, and it lists like a lot of different um, tools that you could use to adapt your theme or create a theme that's responsive. Here's a great site, Media Queries. Um, basically, when you're in this site, you, it shows you tons and tons and tons of sites that are great examples of Media Queries in action, like the different views, the different ways that they even cha they change everything, sometimes even pretty dramatically. Like, if you look at that middle one, on the phone, it just is simple and long. They want the content to shine through, but the middle one, they even have this different bar with this different content area because the way that that screen works, you know, that made sense for that context. So really, we need to look at this about not like designing our site just one way, but really designing our content to really adapt to every possible situation. So... Really, we need to just check all of our browsers, always. We really need to. And we need to check all of our devices, always. And as many devices as you can possibly find. I mean, we are limited to what devices we can check. But, you know, if you're working with media queries and you have an iPhone, but your friend has an Android, just call them up and say, hey, go to this URL, make sure this is cool. <laughs> you know, so, you know, it's a... It's a big task, but really, your content's really just going to shine through with it. It's going to come through really clearly. How are we doing on time? Does anybody know? What? That's three minutes. Do we want to have questions, or do we want to look at more cool sites that respond? You have a question? Yeah. Um, he asked if I could show some projects that I've worked on. Here's a website that I did and called Trek Birmingham uh, Design and Development. It's a, um, a website in Birmingham, Alabama that connects all the green spaces and basically tries to help people learn about the environment that they live in as well as get them outdoors. And um, 
it's great. And we had this situation where we thought, well, people are going to be outside. They're going to be on their phones. They're going to want to look things up on their phone. And so we made this responsive. And the menu is kind of a big drop down. But then on the phone, because through media queries and we can query, make, know that we're on the phone and then make the menu. Instead of being like wide like this, it's stacked, you know, and it's not so spread out and it all fits directly on your phone when you roll over. So it just it isn't one, two, three, it's just right on top of each other. He's looking for a microphone. I don't have my phone connected, so I can't really show you what it looks like on the phone. But basically, all those, um, you can go to it on your phone, but all those different places just sort of stack on top of each other, so you can click on them. And mm -hmm. Check, check Birmingham.com. If it's broken, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope it's not. Uh, I didn't know I was going to do this. <laughs> so we have these three sections, you know, and then when you're on your phone, they all stack up on top of each other and you're able to, you know, really just scroll through and read your content. And that's one example. See. Internet's really slow. Another example of one that I did was we have um, a lawyer who's a client, and he's on his iPad constantly. He's like the hippest lawyer I've ever met. And he really wanted his site to be perfect on the iPad, perfect. So we basically, to the pixel, made it optimized through media queries and responsive design so that when you're on like a big monitor, it looks beautiful. But then when you're on your iPad, it's pixel perfect, gorgeous. So... These are CSS three columns. Um, Quick question. Uh huh. Um, sorry, over here. Yeah. So um, the media queries obviously handle the CSS nicely. Um, in terms of JavaScript, with uh, like let's say you bind like you bind some events to different items, like you have the same markup for all the devices, and that's great. Um, and then you bind some events to those to those items and then when, when you change the size, let's say they're going to have very different behaviors. Um, I haven't read any really good strategies on, like, do you, would you go through and like unbind everything when, when you're resizing the page or do you just have switches inside the events that say, like, okay, now we're at this size, let's do this particular thing instead of this other? I'm not really a JavaScript person so much, so does anybody in here have an answer to that at all? Somebody, Daryl. Uh, so you, <clears throat> uh, you wouldn't have to change your event handling, uh, you know, based on if it's different behavior. You could, I mean, the the the, the JavaScript library that you talked about uh, or that you had a link to up there. I think it has like JavaScript hooks for responding to resolution. There's also like if you're using jQuery, you can look at the uh, width of the browser window and respond similarly if you want to have different behavior. But I mean, essentially what you're doing with media queries is setting up breakpoints uh, and having different style rules apply to the page. So you might do something similar with JavaScript. Does that answer your question Depends on the situation. <laughs> also, this looks really good on Android. Yeah? So, good work. Yay! <laughs> Here are some different examples, unless anybody has a question. Does, is there another question, anybody? Yeah, over here. Um, so what would you recommend for uh, users that don't only want to make the website mobile compatible, but want to go a step further? Because you use your phone differently than you use a computer, so they want to change the interface and the experience based upon what they're using. Well, remember when I was talking about earlier about those plugins? Basically, those really drastically change um, your site. Um, the let me go back to 
Because your site won't look like this, um, this on your computer at all. Like it's completely different. And also, with even with media queries, you can even change your everything based upon. You don't have to just change your font size. You can really change everything. You could change your whole thing, your, all your CSS per device. Even if you you could have a totally different thing on every single thing, but your content would be the same. Is that really kind of what you're talking about? Like making it like. Trek Birmingham could look exactly like this on iPad if I installed this. So. I guess it depends on your philosophy of what you and what you want your mobile site to be like because some people just want to assume that you just want the five links you know and that could be where you serve up a different site kind of like a little adaptive thing and if you want all your content that's where you would you really use media queries because you're not changing the pages that you're loading you're not loading different pages you're not loading different content you're loading the same but you're just making it you know com form better to the device. So, yeah. Question. And really you don't want to like assume, like sometimes people just assume that they know what their users really want mobile, and then you run, I'm sure everybody's run into the problem where they're like, oh my god, this mobile site's awful, like where do I get back to the regular one? You know, so you really have to think about that because you don't want to make assumptions, but then you also want to know your audience and know what they want. So try really hard to think about what people want. Yeah, go ahead. Well, because it's so adaptable and responsive, you don't, you can't give them every possible iteration. You can't, you know, like as we're flexing our screen, you know, our text might move a little bit and our paragraph might be shorter. You know, it's, it's impossible to really account for all, every possible scenario. So basically what I do is I give them, you know, big screen, laptop, phone, and iPad, like four designs. And basically all the in-betweens will fall in between it and they have to learn to be flexible with that idea, you know? But then also, you can also make sure that you target only for that, so you know how things, we're f sitting here flexing the screen. Um, let's see. But with Trek, I do it to a certain point. I put a constraint on it because I know that this is, my browser is not going to get that little, but my iPad will. But if I'm on the iPad and it's this size, it's going to, so you can put certain constraints on what you're doing. And it doesn't have to be like fluid all the way down when you're in on your laptop, but it can be like that for your um, iPad. So does that answer your question at all? Maybe? Okay. Go ahead. Just, um, I'll ask a question since I have the mic. Um, when you are testing and building things, do you actually try to use all the actual devices, or do you know, are there some emulators out there, or websites where, you know, you, do you work with any that'll test across a whole bunch of different browsers and different devices? Um, basically, I have a big monitor, laptop, iPad, iPhone, and my coworker has an Android, and those are kind of the big, big ones you want to hit, but, you know, I'm not going to find a fridge with a you know, internet on it <laughs> and be like, does this work? So, you know, there are some um, different, there's a Chrome extension that, oh, what is it? I'm going to find it real quick. <laughs> um, and then basically you have your little thing up in the side of Chrome and you can make it so that when you're on a big monitor, it'll change your, um, your browser window to different sizes for you and you can see what your um, it's a Chrome extension, <laughs> but so it'll it'll change your browser to different sizes. So if you want to see what 1024 looks like when you're on a big monitor, you go into the drop down and pick it, and it'll just droop, shrink it back in, so you can see what happens. So what's ne where's the next question? Um, since you're pretty good at this at this point, is there? Um, 
it, how much more development is there to do the you know the multiple s versions than there would be just to do a, a single fixed site? How much does it add to a project to do it the right way? How much does it add to a project to in include responsive web design? Yeah. Um, it really depends on how detailed and pixel perfect you want to be, which I tend to be very much like that. So it takes, it adds a lot of work and it takes a long time to really tweak everything all the way down. But in terms of just making things pretty simply just adaptive, it's, it's not that hard at all. It's very, it, you can just put some media queries in and just make sure that you're, you know, just, you know, you can adapt your margins and stuff. I was easy. just hoping it got easier because right now it hurts to do them all. <laughs> Do you happen to know if the virtual screen has been factored into this yet? What? The virtual screen. The virtual screen. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, well, since I always feel like I'm way behind everything, <laughs> I was just curious about this. The virtual screen is the possibility to make a screen that is like a, what do you call it, hologram over your phone so that you can escape the confines of the tiny screen and still use your phone. It's under development, as I understand it. That's all I know about it, so. I don't know about the virtual screen, but it sounds really interesting. <laughs> I am gonna Google it right after this. Do you know about the virtual screen? Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Form styles? I'm sure someone, someone on this uh, media queries website probably does. Um, and there's 21 pages of different sites on here, so I'm sure you can find one that has a good example of forms. Because I'm sure, you know, you can, if you have forms that have inputs in columns, you know, you can move them down so that when you're on a phone, you don't have to scroll around and pinch and stuff. So who's next down there? So I haven't used uh, media queries before, but I have done fluid layouts. Uh huh. And once, even once you get it working so that the layout makes sense and you can like show the client the like beautiful way that it moves when you resize the window, I find that as soon as they start actually creating content, they break the shit out of it and it just falls apart. <laughs> and you're like, oh, and, and, and they don't, it's like you have to train them, okay, okay, your post is done, great, looks good, all right, now take the window and slowly drag it closed from the max width to the min width. And it's like any time you have an image floated mm -hmm. in any direction, especially if there's two nearby each other, there will be one 30 pixel range in the center where you end up with a string of one letter per line oh, yeah. dragging down and that it's like almost impossible to avoid that happening sometimes and that the only way is to like have really strict rules about the content and these examples are so misleading because they look great but like every example of a, a theme you end up with the real content doesn't fit. You don't but have you every single image that has like space on both sides that can be collapsed. And but think, think about this. If you know like you have a typical image size going into your post and you can you know, make it a, a max width and it can shrink right to your browser, when you hit a certain threshold where you know that your content that flows to the left of it or the right of it is going to be a certain too small of a size, you can target that screen resolution and adjust your padding to the image in the post. Does that make sense? Like I've done that for posts before where, you know, you drag the browser window and all of a sudden you're, you're floated left, you know, just what you're saying is like you have like one word like going down. Well, when you hit a certain threshold, you can say in your media query, max, you know, like target no, like no 880 float, pixels. When it hits 880, you know, make the padding like more on the left. So then it bumps everything down. So you can really, if you have certain problems like that, you can really tweak them all the way down. So, because if you have a certain pixel size for your um, body copy, and you know there's going to be a certain amount of room that you need for it to be legible, when it 
exceeds that, like, just yeah. bump it. So the only problem is then it says the photo at right, but it's now above, but it's not yeah. the world. But that's what you're getting into when you're getting that little. You're getting into more um, handheld stuff, you know. So when it gets yeah. smaller and smaller, you can you can really kind of have to really tweak. I think, you know, there are those certain, what I, the media queries that I showed you all are just, you know, basic, like, big browser, you know, medium, little. But when I do, like, Trek, I did it to, um, like, 880, 960, like, all these different, different widths because of the way that I size my images and my grid. There are certain thresholds that I know I need to bump things down to make it work properly. So it's a lot of tweaking, a lot, a lot of tweaking. So do you have a best practice for changing actual interactions from screen-based to touch-based devices, meaning rollovers, tool tips, menus that drop down? Because if you touch those on Android or iPhone, you might quickly get a glimpse of it, but it'll take you to a link to another page right away. Do you have a best practice for converting those to links that you can get all the time on touch devices? So you're saying is there a good practice for touch versus clicking? For Versus screen-based when you get rollover, not mm -hmm. clicking, but rollover interactivity. So like on here, we have these three main things. And when you roll over, they drop down, right? But when you are on the phone, you just touch it, and it drops down. And that's pretty simple. And I think the thing that can really hang you up is if you're really basing your, present, like your site design on a lot of, um, in, like, transitions and stuff like if rollovers those can you know that those don't really happen on touch devices because you can't roll over things so you got to really be careful not to have too many rollovers that will make things confusing for the user if when you click on it nothing happens i guess is that it's it's really kind of like you have to really look at your design very carefully and look at what other people are doing look at it on your device and figure out the best way to do it can you talk about the plugins a little bit more and what can be done with those? The plugins. Let's go back to them. So if you look in the um, WordPress um, plugin repo, you can find a lot, actually. And basically, some of them will just take your content that's structured in the WordPress manner and, like here, just parse it out into a certain style. And in certain plugins, when you install them, you can tweak the colors of the style, or you can hack it, or you can do whatever you want to it. But it basically, out of the box, it makes it, puts it in a very mobile-friendly, iPad-friendly fashion. But it might not necessarily coordinate with your brand. So that's one thing you want to think about when, in terms of plugins. It's like, what's most important? Are you trying to just get your content out there? Are you trying to let people find your information extremely quickly? Or are, do you want to keep your look and feel and how much, you know, what, what do you need to adapt and change in terms of using the plugin to make your brand come through as well? So, yeah. Who's next? Anybody else? Do you have any resources for um, the app media or the media queries, like any websites? Mm -hmm. I think I had it up here at some point. Okay, where was it? Here are some, I'll just leave this up. Here are some resources on media queries. The w3.org, of course, and cssstricks.com media queries. Three minutes. What's going on on sites when they have welcome to the mobile site to see the full site click here? That's when they have kind of a separate mobile site. And so maybe when they see, so you have a separate, maybe they're having a separate mobile site and they say click the full site and that's when they have mo uh, media queries and responsive. That's probably where they just have the do nothing approach, you know. Okay. Where you click that, see the full site here, click it, do nothing. So, well, um, what do you think about having both, like a mobile site for the stripped down version, if they want the whole thing, mm -hmm. a responsive? I mean, that that could work. I I don't know if I know if I've run into that before, but that's like a really interesting idea. Because you know, you might want to have like just three buttons, but then you might want to have your 
content well, be available through media queries? I think, I think the DC Metro site is Does like it? that. I'm trying to figure out what they're doing, and I think it's doing that. DC for. Metro, cool. I'm going to look that up. <laughs> All right. Does, uh, does anybody have any other questions? Oh, one thing I wanted to just really add is 2011, they have spent, all, the developers spent a lot, a lot of time on 2011, and it's really, really well done. So if you are really looking for a great example of um, a responsive site, I would just go and just look at that code, and, and they, they've accounted for video, they've accounted for image scaling, they've accounted for a lot of things especially in the WordPress environment. And so if, if you really want to start playing around, you can also child theme 2011 and child theme 2011 to make it your site responsive and base it off of it. So definitely look at that. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, guys.